Brothers and sisters, I invite you to turn your attention with me to the notices for the coming week. For those who are experiencing challenges or grieving the loss of a loved one, may God's peace and comforting hand surround you and support you. We extend condolences to the family of Brother Clyde Foster, who passed away at the age of 102 years old on August 17th. The details of his service of Thanksgiving will be provided in a subsequent announcement. You are reminded and encouraged to join us for our intentional faith development sessions as we seek to deepen, broaden, and strengthen our faith, preparing ourselves for God's mission for God's people. The youth ministry team thanks all who supported our back to school initiative. The supplies collected are being prepared for distribution to those children identified and monetary donations will be used to purchase other supplies that are needed to complete the packaging. As a community of faith, we uphold in our prayers the people of Haiti following the 7.2 magnitude earthquake they experienced on August 14th. Today will be observed as a day of prayer for all who have suffered through this disaster. Today, as well as next Sunday, August 29th, a special offering will be taken in all churches throughout the district. The offering collected should be sent to the South Caribbean District Office and will then be forwarded to the Haiti District. James Street Spice Town Circuit will host a 72-hour prayer big vigil as we transition into our new church year in September. The prayer vigil will take the form of watches, which are specific times of the day and night in which the congregation will be assigned to pray. There are eight three-hour watches covering the 24 hours of the day. The third hour of each watch will be a corporate prayer. The entire circuit will come together for the third watch via Zoom. The corporate prayers will be led by the assigned congregation of the watch. The vigil begins at 6 p.m. on August 31st and continues until 6 a.m. on September 3rd. Further details on the prayer focus for each watch and the Zoom link will be communicated during the coming week. The music ministry team thanks all who attended and supported our summer concert series 2021 so far. This evening, we will continue our series as we feature Metanoia, the band. Please use, please join us at 5 p.m. here in the chapel or via our YouTube channel and be part of this exciting continuation of our summer concert series 2021. We thank you for being a part of this worship experience today. Have a blessed and spirit-filled week. Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to our 9 a.m. Divine Worship Service for the James Street Methodist Church in Barbados. 
on this fourth Sunday in August. We pray that this worship experience will meet you at your point of need and be a blessing to you. We extend a special welcome to those joining us live via our YouTube channel. And if you are worshiping with us for the first time, we thank you for choosing Jane Street and look forward to sharing fellowship with you again in the future. For the safety of all present in the sanctuary, please be guided by the members of our hospitality team. We remind you to wear your face mask covering both your nose and your mouth for the duration of the service. This morning, our liturgist will be Sister Casey Hinson, and our preacher will be Sister Daria Hinson, both members of our youth fellowship. We pray that God will continue to use our youth to spread his word and draw persons closer to him. We bless God for all others taking part in our service, giving thanks especially for the dedicated contributions of our sexton, our audiovisual, hospitality, and music ministry teams along with Saki and our Children's Corner team. May God continue to bless you and your respective ministries. Brothers and sisters, as we take part in this act of worship, let us be mindful of the ways that God can use us to carry out his mission for his people in our homes, at work, in our communities, and in our social activities. Let us worship God. A blessed good morning, church, and all those joining us via YouTube and on radio. Please join me for the call to worship. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My heart and flesh cry out for the living. Where she may have her young place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. Let us join our voices lustily as we sing the opening hymn. Let all the world in every corner sing, My God and King, hymn number 10 in our voices in praise. the quarantine and the meta metanoia band in praise, worship, and prayer sessions to God.
Thank you to the praise and worship team. May God continue to bless each of you, each of your, and strengthen you, your talents. We will now have the children's corner. Beloved, let us bow our hearts before God as we offer prayers of adoration, confession, and thanksgiving as we are mindful of the week we've had and the week and the months and the years ahead of us. Shall we bow our hearts before God? Merciful and gracious God, who are we that you are mindful of us? Dear God, even at this time as we, as we come into your house, 
as we come into your house and we humbly kneel before your throne of grace, dear God, we adore you. We magnify your holy name. Dear God, we are mindful of the years that we've had. We are mindful, dear God, of the challenges that we have had. We are mindful, dear God, of the struggles that we have had, but we are also mindful that we are a resilient people because you have placed your strength in us and we stand on your strength and your strength alone. And so, dear God, we adore you as the king of this universe. Dear God, we adore you as the Lord of our lives. We adore you as the author and the finisher and the perfecter of our faiths. Dear God, we adore you in the highest. We magnify and glorify your holy name. Dear God, we consider the lands that we live in. We consider the persons that you have brought into our existence. Dear God, we consider the opportunity to worship and adore your holy name. Dear God, and all we can do this day is say hallelujah. Dear God, to you and to you alone, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory for you are the magnificent God. Dear God, we forget all that is past all that is left behind dear God as your servant Paul said and we press on dear God towards the goal that you have laid out for us oh heavenly father we adore you dear God we give you thanks dear heavenly father for all that you have done dear heavenly father even in our act of in our act of adoration, even in, in recognizing how small we are, dear God, and how magnificent you are, dear God, we are minded that there are times, there are times when we have failed you, dear God. We are minded, dear Heavenly Father, that there are times when we have engaged in, in conversations, in thoughts, in actions that have not been in accordance with your perfect will for us, dear God. We are mindful of the times, dear God, where we have lost, lost faith, dear Heavenly Father, where we have strayed, where we have seen a brother or a sister, dear God, that, and we knew needed our assistance, and we have looked the other way. Dear God, we are mindful that we have not, in many, many ways and on many, many occasions, done the work that we know you have set out for us in this section of your vineyard, dear God. Dear God, we are minded of the talents that you have placed in us, and yet we have been jealous of others' talents, and, and we have withheld our service, dear God. Or when we have given our service, we have not given it wholeheartedly, as if we are given to the King of the universe. Oh God, we confess all that we have done that has not been pleasing in your sight, dear God. And dear God, at this moment, in this, in this small snapshot of time and space that we are caught in right now, we take a few moments in the silence of our hearts and in the calming of our spirits, and we individually place, dear God, all our confessions before you. Father, oh dear loving Father, you promised us, dear God, that if we confess our sins, if we come before you with a penitent heart, that you are faithful and you are just and you will wipe away all of our transgressions, dear God. And so, Heavenly Father, it is on that promise and on that promise alone, dear God, that we stand this day. It is on that promise alone, dear God, that we give you thanks, dear God, because as your word says, your, your mercies are new every single morning. We aren't, we aren't deserving of these mercies, oh God, but yet you keep pouring them out every day dear god and your word promises dear god that your grace is sufficient for us and so dear heavenly father we thank you 
We thank you for the lives that you have afforded us, dear God. We thank you, dear God, for the mercies. We thank you for the blessings. We thank you for the love. We thank you for the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for us, dear God. Even before we were formed in our mother's wombs, dear God, you thought about us and sent your only son to die for us. And dear God, this day, we give you thanks, oh Heavenly Father. We give you thanks. We come before you, dear God, with thankful hearts because this morning we see two of our seed, dear God, in the pulpit this morning, dear God. And so we know that this church, this church, James Street, that you have raised up is a growing church, dear God. And so we give you thanks for them and we, we pray your blessings upon them and upon all our young people, all our youth, dear God, all our, all our elderly, all our, all our young, young adults, dear God. Dear God, we lay it all before you this day with thankful hearts. For you have raised up a resilient people, dear God. And we will never, ever stop serving you. For you are our God. And in you alone, we live and move and have our being. So dear God, this day, all these mercies we pray and we ask, dear God, that as our petitions go up from here, they may be ratified around your throne of grace in heaven. And all these mercies we pray through the matchless, through the matchless name that is above every other name, the name of your Son, our Lord, risen Savior, and soon coming King, Jesus the Christ. And let the people of God say, Amen and Amen. So today our theme is made in God's image and this is something we are talking about as we prepare to go back into school. We will be using the passage Genesis 1 verse 26 which says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image and in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the earth. So as we go back to school and we meet up with new friends or old friends, we may try to change ourselves or try to fit into a different group because we may feel that that is necessary. But what this craft is going to help us to do is it's going to help us to appreciate ourselves and to bring out who God made us to be. Now in this craft, what we're going to need is a picture of an outline of ourselves. So this one is a female. Um, it's going to have, I am made in the image of God and then what we're going to do is that we're going to get little cutouts of things that we may like so we have here uh, a ball and some superhero cutouts because these are things that these persons may like and what we're going to do is that we're going to stick them on and color in the outline here and then we're going to write some stuff that we have um, for the crop so let's see what the crop will look like at the end
Hi guys and welcome back to our singing time. Woo! And today guys we're going to be singing the song I am a promise, I am a possibility, I am a promise with a capital P. I am a great big bundle of potentiality and I'm waiting to hear God's voice and I'm trying to make the right choice. I am a possibility, anything God wants me to be. So boys and girls, let's get ready to sing and have a good time. scripture that God made us in his image and what that basically means is that he made us special and that he has reflected his love within us to shine among the whole world so here in the craft we have two different people and what we have here is different facets of our lives whether it is food superheroes TikTok sports and what we want you guys to realize from this is that with each thing that you are or each thing that you like you are made special and that you are made to be confident in yourselves and to feel as though you are your own person. So as you go out into the world and more specifically as you go into schools, you can feel within yourself, I am confident, I love myself and I know who I am and that would allow you to go through your entire life with God's love. Alright, that's the end of today's craft guys. See you next week. have a round of, our, of applause for our Children's Corner team. Okay, so now it's time to celebrate birthdays. Does anyone here today have a birthday? No one? Don't win. I heard you have a birthday. Is this your birthday today? <laughs> oh, but the word went so. Okay. Happy birthday. And to all those celebrating birthdays in the chapel and online, and let's take our attention to the screens.
blessed birthday. Are there any anniversaries? Huh? I see Angela and um, Brother Clarence. Oh, yesterday? Okay, round of applause for that. <laughs> Brother Michael and his wife. <laughs> Sister Diane, right? Yeah, okay, Are there any more anniversaries? Okay, may God continue to bless you all. Can we have the anniversaries? And to all of those celebrating any other achievements, congratulations to you. We will now have the blessings of tithes and offering. May we stand and say the collect. Lord, we come before you today to, pres to present our tithes and offering to you in faith. We, be we believe in your word and we honor you today as we can by putting our faith in action through giving in the wooden boxes in the church or online via wire transfer. This information can be found on the James Street Circuit Facebook page or from a congregation, congregation store. God of glory, the end of our searching, help us to lay aside all, the, all that prevents us from seeking your kingdom and to give all that we have to gain, the pearl beyond all price, through our Savior Jesus Christ, amen. Let's join our voices in praise to, to God as we sing, O oh God, my Father, hymn 22a.
The Old Testament, the Old Testament reading will be read by Sister Ashley Edwards, followed by a reading from Genesis by Sister Davina Waldron, and the Gospel by Brother Julian Pierre. The lesson is according to 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 1, 6, 10 to 11, 22 to 30, and 41 to 43 tells of the dedication of the temple and Solomon's prayer of dedication. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the ancestral houses of the Israelites before King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Then the priests brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. And when the priests came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all of the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on the earth beneath. Keep in covenant and steadfast love for your servants who walk before you with all their heart. The covenant that you kept for your servant, my father David, as you declared it to him. You promised with your mouth and have this day fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, keep for your servant, my father David, that which you promised him, saying, There shall never fail you a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel. If only your children look to their way to walk before me as you have walked before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed which you promised to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. Have regard to your servant's prayer and his plead, O Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you today that your eyes may be open night and day towards this house, the place of which you said, My name shall be there, that you may heed the prayer that your servant prays towards this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray towards this place, O here in heaven your dwelling place, heed and forgive. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people Israel, comes from a distant land because of your name, for they shall hear of your great name, your mighty hand and your outstretched arm. When a foreigner comes and prays towards his house, then hear in heaven your dwelling place and do according to all that the foreigner calls to you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you as do your people Israel so that they may know that your name has been invoked on this house that I have built. This is the word of the Lord. The Bible reading is taken from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. While the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And 
there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Here ends the Bible reading. The Gospel is taken from John chapter 6, verses 56 to 69. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this. He said to them, Does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe, and who would betray him. And he said, Therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Here ends the Gospel. Please be seated. Well, no, stand, please, sorry. As we prepare our hearts for the message that God has sent to us by Sister Zaria Hankson, this morning, we will sing, He Touched Me, Oh, He Touched Me, and Oh, the Joy That Floods My Soul, in our voices of praise, number 181.
please be seated. Good morning. Good morning, church, and thank you for your very warm welcome. It is always a pleasure to bring the word of God to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, allow me to deliver a message that is pleasing to you. And may we leave this place with a better understanding and a zeal to serve you and do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Creating sacred spaces. What is a sacred space or place? What is sacred? It is the fact that is worthy of respect and dedication and believed to be holy, a place where us as Christians connect to God, a place where we pray, worship, and celebrate. There are several places that are deemed the most sacred in the world. Jerusalem, Arabia, the Western world, the list goes on and on. The question is, do we have a sacred place of our own? Is it a special room in our houses, our gardens, our church? Wherever that place may be, it is a space separated from any other. A space you can talk or share things, a space you enter seeking tranquility and quiet to gather your thoughts, or maybe a space where you search for a better relationship with God. When God created Adam, he set apart a sacred space in which he would enter into fellowship with his newly created image bearer. Just as God created time and space, Genesis chapter one, verse one to two, Part of the lesson read by four-year-old Davina Wardwin, it tells us to set apart, a por set apart a portion of that time which he made to be sacred unto him. So the Lord set apart a portion of sacred space in which man would worship him. Let's examine the importance of creating sacred spaces. The Garden of Eden was a place of God's special blessing one of the special spaces on this newly created earth, marked out as the place that man had in God's world. Although the entire world and earth is so blessed by God that there is fruitfulness and pleasure and joy everywhere, Adam was the firstborn among men and enjoyed a more excellent portion. That is why God chose this place. God intended to show us the special role that we would play in the world. The garden was full of every kind of delightful plant and tree for man's enjoyment. The Lord reserved this special place for the crown of his creation. The Garden of Eden was the earthly temple, the dwelling place of God with man. The Garden of Eden was a reflection of heaven. Heaven which is paradise. Every sacred space in the Old Testament, as we read, was a model of the garden. The garden was a temple in which man knew how much of a delight it is to worship God. And it should come as no surprise that the Old Testament sacred spaces had symbols of paradise in their constitution. Things like pomegranates, palm trees, lilies, cedar, were all part of the typical sacred space until the coming of Christ. However, what is to happen in that sacred space, not only should it be beautified, but rather we are to live in fellowship, community, and worship. Our external environment often reflects our inner state. The congestion of our mind and complexity of our lifestyle leave a trail of debris and disarray everywhere we stop. Sometimes we are so confused and upset and I'm sure of where, which direction to go next. Often we claim we have little time to reflect on our spiritual condition, much less bring order to it. However, we need to create that sacred space in our lives. So how do we do this? How we create a space for meditation or spiritual connection 
how we dedicate a spot that can become sacred, how we create our own altars, how we surround ourselves with inspirational icons, how we make our own rituals. The church should also be that sacred space. This should be our sacred place of safety, a holy area considered sacred because of the presence of God, not only for us, but for others too. It is also a worship area and a spiritual retreat, protecting our conscience from self-hatred and a sacred place of exile from our own sinful nature. A space that lets you express your every human need for our ongoing spiritual nourishment, whether it's at home, at work, or in some third space such as a hotel room when traveling. Everyone can benefit from creating places where they intentionally choose what surrounds them. However, it is important that we leave out the distractions of the world when we come to our sacred space. It has to be a place where we experience and enjoy spiritual solitude that requires no action and where our sense of reverence dominates. A place to be reborn and be renewed every day. A place to find rest. It is about drawing yourself inward and getting, getting closer to what's in your heart. Remember in Genesis that having fled for his life from his brother Esau, Jacob fell asleep on a stone and dreamt of a ladder stretching between heaven and earth thronged with angels. When he awoke, Jacob anointed the stone with oil and named the sacred place Bethel, house of God, a place where God is worshiped. So if he can do it, we can do it if we really want to. Today we are in a sacred space, but how many of us are exclusively worshiping and connecting with God? Or are we on our cell phones, answering emails, talking to someone about a matter that isn't urgent, thinking about a stressful situation, about what we are going to prep for lunch or the week ahead? Can we not concentrate on God during this time in our sacred space? We find many, many excuses to delay our spiritual growth. Even in this pandemic, a room at home or maybe an empty closet is enough to form a sacred place that can be used as a worship area. You simply have no excuse. We can start purifying it by removing clutter, then painting, vacuuming, and letting fresh air through a window. We can leave it totally bare or gradually introduce pleasing visuals, artwork, plants and flowers with sacred texts readily available. Whether your life is urban, suburban, or rural, whether your home is a sprawling estate or a studio apartment, you can create a special place for simple reflection, spiritual meditation, prayer, and worship. It all starts with a desire within you to make something beautiful and spiritual. However, we must not be distracted by the aesthetic picture or the beauty of this place. Because calling upon the divine presence through prayer and spiritual reading is the primary and most important way of purifying and sanctifying any area. I am challenging us all to find that place to connect solely with God without distractions. It is not enough to only create a sacred place for Sundays, for it should be used every day in our lives. But in addition to that physical place, we must also create a sacred place in our minds so that our thoughts cultivate a thinking of spirituality. We want to establish a clear physical boundary between the profane and the divine in our life to desire the vision of God, the fear of losing him in our thoughts, actions, and decision-making. Ultimately, in our lives, we want to enhance intimacy with God and facilitate worship. 
not a shrine of a deity, nor an altar where offerings are made. Our personal mindful sanctuary is our private sacred place of prayer, meditation, and reflection. Calling upon verses such as, the Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. Psalm chapter 145 verse 18. When we detach our mind from lingering attachments by this, where we prevent useless reminiscing over our irresponsible past by disconnecting our thoughts from clutter associated with a discarded lifestyle, we avoid stumbling over memories of abandoned habits and behavior contradicting that of our current spiritual state. Thoughts of God produce a divine presence within us that resembles a personal sanctuary where we are immune from unholy authority. With remembrance of God, we enter a private, peaceful place that cannot be violated by intruders. If we cultivate this presence, maintaining it with constant attention, we can foster and extend connection to God. In our sacred space, or in our sacred place, Disturbances, interferences, interruptions, they don't affect our thoughts and feelings. Our own reality fades into background noise while the divine reality envelops all of our senses. In closing, the church needs to be a safe place and sacred place for all. Every level of the church and every group, organization, and congregation affiliated with the church. Many families find themselves in oppressive situations with no way out. Now this, this is where the church comes in. In our broken world full of structural violence and injustice, oppression often takes a form of cycles of poverty, chronic chronic medical conditions, abandonment, abuse, whatever form it takes, the church has a responsibility to come alongside, support, and empower oppressed families so that they can break those cycles in a sacred space with God's presence and guidance. We all know that there's just something about church that society finds in times of tragedy and hardship. They want to turn to God or want help and guidance from him. And that is where we as Christians must come in. This always fascinates me because the media and general public embrace church or the idea of church during a time of crisis. But in times of peace and prosperity, the church seems to become irrelevant again. Regardless of this, the church keeps people grounded, whether they realize that or not flushing out the burden of life by providing a bedrock of faith and answers to humanity's deepest needs. The role of the modern church in the life of a 21st century believer is critical because it fills a void only the church can. If a car needs to be fixed, it is brought to the mechanic shop. If someone is sick, the clinic or the hospital is the best place to seek medical attention. The church, or the people of the church, is where troubled persons should go if they are in need of a spiritual fix. The church is really a hospital for sinners and not an exclusive club for saints. Regardless of what is said about churches, people expect that their life problems can be addressed in some fashion or form with all the weight and pressures of their world weighing down on their minds. People expect the church to provide Bible-based answers that no other institution can provide. And we must ensure that the Methodist Church is creating a sacred space for all those who are in need. In creating that sacred space, we must meet the needs of their spiritual, emotional, and yes, physical desires. Second Timothy chapter three, verse one, helps me put this in perspective. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Are these our last days? I don't know. But more and more children are growing up in broken homes. Unemployment is on the rise and Christians are sinking deeper into debt like never before. Many churchgoers are struggling to make ends meet in their everyday lives. 
and we feel the harsh pinch of reality just like everyone else. Believers, believe it or not, are not exempt from the trials of the world. We are living in perilous and drastic times. And as they say, drastic times call for drastic measures. And sacred spaces with groups in churches should be available to meet the needs in each believer's life. This should be something that the church can provide to all who need it. Irrespective of church size, each church can provide effective small group ministries and outreach services. Even smaller churches can and should have specialized small groups. This momentum can then spread out beyond the walls of the church and be incorporated into the community where the church serves. So what are we doing as people? What are we doing as Christians? What are we doing as Methodists? I challenge us today, to the best of our ability, let the Methodist Church lead in creating sacred spaces for those in need and be used as an example for others to follow and develop. And although it's short, I, I trust and ensure that you all got my message of sacred spaces, places for people who are in need, for people who want it, for people who just want to be there. We as a church must provide that. We as a church must ensure that whatever problems comes on our doorstep, we are able to help. We are able to find guidance. We are able to provide. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Sister Zaria Hanson, for your word this morning. You will now have the prayers of intercession and the Lord's Prayer by Sister Nikita Dahl. May we pray. Dear God of mercy and grace, we come before you collectively as a body of believers under God to intercede for the people and situations that we carry in our hearts, praying that because of your grace, you will intervene and hoping that our prayers correspond to your perfect will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the church, every person that believes in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We pray that we would hold fast to our faith even when it is tested that we would have the courage to always choose you, O oh God, even when choosing you is the more difficult or even the more dangerous choice. May we always trust in your protection of those who love you. We pray for our children and young people and those persons who are young in faith, especially those preparing for Christian confirmation. Life can be very difficult even for mature Christians for there are still many things that, we may not, that may not be understood on this side of eternity. So we pray that those young in the faith may be surrounded by persons to lead and mentor them through the Christian journey, that they may be continually encouraged to hold fast to Christ, even in uncertainty and difficult times. Dear God, protect them from the evil one. We pray for all church leaders, and especially our ministers and our bishop. We pray that they will continually lean on you for the strength and guidance that they need. We pray that those who are assigned to support them will be faithful to their commitments, remembering that the responsibility of sharing and building God's kingdom does not fall on any one person, but we all have a part to play. We pray for the leaders of countries all over the world. May they be ever aware that they are accountable to you. As much power as they may have, may they be reminded that you are the all-powerful God and you have ultimate control. May they lead not with hard hearts, but with hearts of compassion and mercy. We pray especially for the leaders of our country, Barbados, the Governor General, Prime Minister, members of the Senate, ministers of Parliament, and the opposition. May they seek your guidance and listen to your voice as they make decisions for us. 
May they allow your Holy Spirit to dwell within them. May they have the courage to make the right decisions, even if they're not the most popular ones. We pray for countries at war and those affected by natural disasters and man-made crises. Even in the midst of chaos, may their circumstances be an opportunity for them to experience the supernatural power of your peace, which passes all understanding. May they also receive their physical and practical needs water, food, shelter, and all that they need to be safe and to sustain their lives, and may their human rights be respected. Open the hearts of your people to provide any assistance that we can to our brothers and sisters who are hurting, suffering, and oppressed. Even as they receive help, dear God, we pray by the power of your Holy Spirit against those who will seek to misappropriate the resources given to help the needy. We pray against spirits of greed and corruption that will seek to further oppress the poor and vulnerable. We pray for those who are mourning, brokenhearted, heavy laden, overworked, underpaid, and exploited. We pray for a divine intervention in their lives. We pray that they may see your powerful right hand working in their lives to bring healing, breakthrough, and redemption. We pray that they will learn to cast their cares upon you and trust your faithfulness. We pray for persons who are battling health challenges, whether chronic, mild, or severe. We pray that they will not become overwhelmed by their circumstance, and we pray for holistic healing of the spirit, mind, and body. More than anything else, may their souls be healed, for souls are forever. May we see you at work in their healing, so that you, their God, may be glorified. May your will be done. We pray for unbelievers. We pray that the strongholds and chains on their hearts and souls may be broken in the name of Jesus so that they may see you, O God, and know your love. May they learn and know without a shadow of a doubt that you alone are God. May they acknowledge your son Jesus as the only Lord and Savior of their lives, and may they accept your free gift of salvation and eternal life. Continue to prompt your people called by your name, Christians, to share the love and story of Jesus Christ, for we never know when that sharing may result in a soul being saved unto Christ. Dear God, there is no region in this precious world that you have created that is untouched by major turmoil at this time. Global warming has increased the occurrences of natural disasters that are ravaging countries sometimes multiple times a year. COVID-19 has affected the entire world. The fights against social injustices like racism and other forms of discrimination and oppression are still raging. Nations are divided over one thing or the other. Economies are crumbling. The majority of the world's wealth is still in the possession of a minority. There is still a need to fight for religious freedom and the list goes on and on. Dear God, may we see the signs. May we see how all of this is laid out in scripture, in your world that you have given to us. May we feel the urgency. May we acknowledge that now is not the time to ease up, but now is the time to pick up the pace in carrying out your mission, your mission of salvation and reconciliation. May we offer all that we have and all that we are to do all that we can to act on our own salvation and to bring those to you who have not yet been saved. We, your people, are crying out. May you hear us and turn your favor towards us and our requests. This we pray in no other name than the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we depart from service here and service in our separate places, we sing the closing hymn, A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save, and fit it for the sky. In our voices in praise, number 314.
standing and before we leave, let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.